Hi, I'm Jordan Boyd-Graver, and I'm going to be talking about topic models for dynamic translation model adaptation. This is a joint work with Vlad Edelman and Philip Resnick. We're all at the University of Maryland. So typically what happens in a domain adaptation system is you have a training corpus that's built out of a number of domains, Newswire, Web, Europarl, and when a document comes in that you want to have translated, you figure out which of those domains does the best job of translating it, and you build a system out of that. But we hope that we can do better, because if you think about it, any particular theme can appear in a number of domains, and within a particular uh, document, there could be a variety of styles or content expressed in any given document. And we hope to be able to discover this diversity uh, automatically in an unsupervised way using topic models. And we're going to uh, use these uh, soft unsupervised domains that we induce from our corpus in order to bias our lexical weighting uh, in a translation model. So to see why this might be a reasonable idea, consider the Chinese phrase fen si hen duo. Now in a formal restaurant-y uh, kind of context, a reasonable translation of this would be uh, there's a lot of vermicelli, there's a lot of noodles, something like that. Um, but if you're in a different context, say a more informal web chat context, a more reasonable translation would be there are a lot of fans. And this is the sort of distinction that we hope to be able to capture automatically using topic models. Now, a bit of a review of topic models. So topic models take as input a large collection of documents, and uh, you tell it how many topics uh, you want it to find, and it does it. And what's more, uh, and this is uh, the aspect that we're going to be using uh, for our system, it also gives you a distribution for each document over topics. And you can represent that as a simplex, uh, which for three topics is just a triangle. And so this shows that the red light, green light, a two-tone LED to simplify screens is all about the technology topic. And uh, another article, uh, forget the bootleg, just download the movie legally, is a mixture of technology, business, and entertainment. So uh, we used Mallet in order to uh, discover topics in this experiment. And Mallet implements latent Dirichlet allocation, probably the best known topic model out there. We only did this on the source documents. So translating Chinese to English, uh, we run our topic models on all the Chinese data, both uh, training and test. We never look at the English data. And we're also making the assumption that the topic distribution is the same for every sentence in the document. More on this later. So now, how are we going to use these topics to um, change the way we do lexical weighting in a statistical machine translation system? So first, a bit of a review. In a standard SMT system, uh, you build up a phrase table that gives you the probability for every phrase in your source data, the probability of it being translated into a phrase in your target data. And you use the entire corpus to do this. David Chang in 2011 showed that you can do a bit better if you have the domains. And so you build up a phrase table for each domain, and when a document comes in, you use the most appropriate phrase translation table. That's a bit of a simplification, but it's a fine way to think about it. Now, we're going to do a similar thing with topic models. And so we build up a phrase table for every topic. Topic 1, topic 2, topic 3, every topic that we asked our topic model to find. And the probabilities here are the expected counts under that topic. So how do we use these to translate a particular document? So what we do is we build up a feature vector using the per document distribution over topics. That's the histogram on the right here. And we multiply the uh, probability in the phrase translation table by the probability of the topic. So. Uh, the first entry in topic one says that fen si hen duo translates to lots of vermicelli with probability 0.71. Uh, 
We multiply that by 0.65, the probability of topic 1, given the document, and we do the same thing for every phrase pair in every topic. And for each individual phrase pair, we take the entry for each of the topics to build up a feature vector that we'll use in our discriminative training. So let's see how this works. Um, we did experiments on translating Chinese to English in two settings. One was a small collection, FBiz, um, that we chose because it did have explicit document boundaries. We also had a larger collection that didn't have document boundaries. So we need to have documents for topic modeling. Um, but what do we do if our data don't have document boundaries, which is often the case for machine translation data. So what we decided to try out is what if we just said that every sentence was its own little tiny document? And uh, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Let's see. So uh, our baseline system, without using any uh, domain knowledge, um, on the small FPIS data set gets around 28.7 blue score. And we get an improvement if we use a five-topic model uh, using the documents. But what was surprising to me, at least, was that uh, you do better if you use sentences as your tiny documents. And uh, you do even better still if you use 10 topics using either documents as documents or sentences as tiny documents. And uh, we get a statistically significant gain of about 0.6 over the baseline for the uh, 10 topic sentence as tiny document model. And uh, given this surprising result, to me at least, um, we decided to uh, try it out on a larger corpus um, using uh, sentences as tiny documents. And uh, we, we didn't show this here, but we discussed in the paper, um, 10 topics seem to be about where we started to see um, no appreciable gains. Um, perhaps with larger data, we would see that. So I'm only going to show uh, 10 topics. And so here, um, using sentences as our, as our tiny uh, documents, we do uh, one point uh, better than our baseline, uh, which uh, is nice for, for what is a relatively easy uh, technique. So um, these results are still fairly preliminary. Um, we'd like to try more advanced models. Um, there are uh, multilingual topic models out there that uh, have topics that are consistent across languages. And this is a sort of situation where that might be really valuable. Um, moreover, it might be uh, worthwhile to throw uh, more data at the problem. And so here we only use the source data, but uh, for topic modeling, we don't need parallel data. We can use as much uh, source data as we'd like. And uh, it would also uh, be interesting to try out hierarchical models so that we can take advantage of documents when we have them and if not gracefully degrade to sentences and perhaps we can get some gain out of that as well. And uh, just as a caveat we only tried this out on Chinese to English. We don't have any reason to suspect why it wouldn't work in other languages um, but we might be able to have a better understanding of what's going on to see how it performs uh, in different languages. So to conclude, um, we proposed a way to extend the concept of uh, domain uh, adaptation using unsupervised induced domains using topic models. And we did that by biasing uh, the topic model uh, information inside the translation system. Thank you very much.